the Sunda plate has begun to move in a way that is impossible to ignore. Not with a shake that rattles windows or a roar that splits the coast, but with a deep tectonic pulse, a silent and unsettling shift registered only by the instruments staring into the Earth's crust. At first, it was just tremor noise, a small spike recorded by a single station on the western fringe of Sumatra. Then, hours later, two more sensors picked up identical frequency signatures. And by nightfall, almost every seismic monitor from the Java Trench to the Andaman Corridor was recording the same rhythmic beat beneath the ocean floor. This is the kind of signal that precedes change. Not weather, not tide, but crustal movement on a scale that rewrites coastlines and redraws ocean boundaries. For decades, the Sunda Plate has carried the weight of subduction quietly, absorbing the downward grind of the Indian-Australian plate slipping beneath it. But nothing quiet lasts forever in the world of geology. Pressure is patient, and plates are stubborn. When one sinks and the other holds, stress becomes inevitable, building low and slow, like water behind a dam. Tonight, the dam is sounding. Low-frequency tremors, harmonic in tone, too consistent to be coincidence, too familiar to be dismissed, have taken hold beneath the trench. These are the same tremor types scientists heard before the Indian Ocean roared to life in 2004, before a wave taller than trees and stronger than cities rose and ran across the world in a matter of hours. It is not that another disaster is guaranteed, only that the planet is again speaking in that same ancient geological language. The sensors do not lie. The ground is lifting in thin increments along the western Sumatra curve and shifting laterally along the locked fault segments near the Sunda Strait. These tiny uplifts, just millimeters on satellite imaging, represent energy pushing upward as deep rock resists downward force. It is not violent yet, but it is tense, and tension in this region has never ended gently. Beneath the crust, magma is beginning to press into chambers that have not fully expanded in years. Krakatoa's caldera has warmed by fractions, barely a whisper of heat, but enough for remote sensing to capture. Further east, Merapi exudes gas with slightly more urgency, its dome shifting grain by grain, Volcanoes do not rise in chorus unless the ground beneath them is speaking with authority. There is no panic in the air, only caution, only the steady hum of experts who have watched this subduction zone long enough to know that escalation rarely arrives with warning claps. It arrives as it is arriving now, quiet, methodical, precise. The movement of two plates pressed together by the weight of time by forces deeper than ocean trenches and older than every city that stands upon them. The Sunda plate is holding, but the signs now suggest resistance, not comfort. Locked faults are refusing release. Stress lines are stretching. One part of the plate wants to rise, another wants to fold, and the ocean floor between them is tightening like rope drawn to its limit. Wave models are being recalibrated not because a tsunami is coming, but because the probability space has changed. A single rupture could direct unimaginable energy outward, moving water in patterns modeled only in digital labs and historical memory. Coastal regions, still awake in neon light and traffic noise, have no sense of the deep motion beneath them. Shores where children play and markets operate daily sit atop the world's second most dangerous subduction line, and the line has begun to murmur. There is an eerie calm associated with these early strain phases. No news broadcast interrupts, no sirens wail, and the sea continues its moon-driven rhythm against familiar sand. Yet under 40 kilometers of crust, rock that has held firm for decades, is beginning to bend microscopically. This bending is not visible, not tactile, but it is real. As real as wind, as real as tide. In the next days and weeks, if the pressure cannot release through gradual slip, it will search for a fault line, a weak seam, anywhere it can burst upward or outward. Whether that release becomes a moderate quake 
felt only in passing, or a megathrust event that travels the Pacific Rim, depends entirely on the friction building at this exact moment along a border older than civilization itself. Satellite heat maps show a faint thermal smear along the Java Trench lip, a signature of friction warming rock. Engineers describe it clinically, but beneath those terms is a reality that feels alive, that feels like movement made by intention. The Sunda plate is not trembling, but it is preparing, adjusting, awakening in its own geological tempo. Every inch of coastline from Aceh to Lombok sits on this rhythm. Humans walk above it unaware, sleeping in towers and farms and fishing boats while the deep earth rehearses its next motion. This is the great paradox of tectonics. The earth reveals its plans, but never its timing. We see the uplift, the plate lock, the tremor chorus, the magma signals. We know what these signs have meant before, yet we never know whether the next shift will be a whisper or a roar. But tonight, instruments show the highest stress load on the Sunda boundary since the early 2000s. Data streaming in from the deep ocean sensors shows slight but undeniable change in water column pressure above the trench. The earliest of early warnings that mass may be preparing to move. And so the region waits, not with fear, but with watchfulness. The earth does not rush. It stores, it tightens, it remembers the direction plates are meant to slide, whether days or months from now, whether as a tremor barely felt or a fracture that defines a century, the Sunda plate will eventually exhale the pressure it now holds. It is the nature of every plate on Earth. But here, in this volatile corridor of collision and fire, that exhale is never small. It is tectonic truth. Energy cannot stay silent forever. Deep beneath the calm sea and crowded shorelines, the planet is writing its next chapter. And tonight, the writing has begun. To understand the scale of this writing, one must look past the instruments and into the physics of the trench itself. 6,000 meters down, where light is a myth and pressure is a physical assault, the seabed is no longer static. The accretionary wedge, that vast, chaotic pile of sediment scraped off the descending oceanic plate, is compressing. It is a slow-motion car crash that has been happening for millions of years, but tonight, the metal is screaming. Hydrophones suspended in the deep channel are picking up the distinct acoustic pop of rock fracturing under compression, sounds that travel through water faster and clearer than through air. These are not the grinding noises of plates sliding freely. These are the sharp cracks of resistance, the sound of geology fighting against momentum. The friction coefficients along the megathrust interface are spiking, creating asperities, rough locked patches of rock that act as breaks on a continental scale. When these breaks fail, they do not fail slowly. They snap. Above this abyssal drama, the surface world remains deceptively ordinary. The humidity of the tropics wraps around the islands like a blanket, dampening sound and softening the edges of the night. In the crowded districts of Jakarta and the quiet fishing villages of West Sumatra, life adheres to the human scale of time. Minutes, hours, work shifts, sleep cycles. But beneath the foundations of the skyscrapers and the wooden stilts of the pier houses, the geological clock is ticking in a different time signature. The bedrock is storing elastic energy, bowing imperceptibly like a drawn archer's bow. This elastic strain is the silent killer. It is the potential energy that, once released, transforms solid ground into a liquid ocean of debris. The soil composition in these coastal basins, rich with volcanic ash and loose sediment, is primed for liquefaction. If the Sunda plate releases its tension violently, the very earth that supports these millions of sleepers will lose its cohesion, turning into a slurry that swallows structures whole. The connectivity of the system is what keeps the seismologists awake. The Sunda plate does not exist in a vacuum. It is a puzzle piece locked against the Philippine sea plate to the east 
and the complex mosaic of microplates near Timor. A significant shift here sends stress waves propagating through the entire crustal lattice of Southeast Asia. Already the subtle tremors near Sumatra are triggering sympathetic vibrations in the chaotic fault lines of Sulawesi. It is a domino setup of planetary proportions. The deep earth is vibrating like a struck bell, and the resonance is traveling through the mantle, whispering to dormant systems that it might be time to wake up. This is the global nature of tectonics. A, a shudder in the Java Trench can alter the stress balance in fault lines thousands of miles away, invisibly loading the gun for future events in places that feel safe tonight. Even the wildlife, tuned to frequencies and vibrations that human senses filter out, has begun to react. Reports from Coastal Nature, reserves describe unseasonal movements of birds, a quiet exodus from the low-lying nesting grounds toward the inland hills. Deep-sea trawlers report unusual catch patterns, hauling up species that typically dwell in the benthic darkness, forced upward by disturbances we cannot feel. The electromagnetic field variations caused by the compression of quartz-bearing rock deep underground may be acting as a beacon of distress that only the animal kingdom can decode. They are moving because the Earth is singing a song of warning, a low-frequency dirge that vibrates through the bone rather than the ear. The atmosphere itself seems to hang heavy, charged with the peculiar stillness that often predates seismic violence. It is a phenomenon often dismissed as folklore, earthquake weather. Yet there is a palpable density to the air tonight, a static cling that raises the hairs on the arms of those working the late shifts at the docks. While scientifically unproven, the ionospheric anomalies detected by satellites suggest that the stress in the crust is generating subtle electrical charges, bleeding into the atmosphere and altering the local magnetic environment. The planet is a closed loop. When the crust grinds, the sky above it feels the friction. Ultimately, the sun de plate cares nothing for the civilizations riding its back. It is driven by the convective churn of the mantle, a heat engine fueled by the radioactive decay of the planet's core. We are merely passengers on a raft of cooling rock, drifting over a sea of molten purpose. The tension building tonight is the mechanism of planetary renewal, the violent recycling of crust that creates atmosphere, builds mountains, and shapes the continents. It is destructive only from the perspective of the transient species living on the surface. To the Earth, it is simply a breath, a realignment, a necessary adjustment of mass and gravity. But for those watching the screens, watching the lines jolt and the heat maps bloom, the waiting is the hardest part. The silence stretches, taut and humming, filling the space between the seconds. The writing is on the wall, etched in silica and basalt, and the story it tells is one of inevitable, unstoppable release. The plate will move, the only question that remains, hanging in the humid night air, is when the silence will break.